Okay, friends, I know you've been pining away all summer because you haven't had one of these wonderful videos from me about graphing, and you'll be about just prize about as happy as Snoopy here. So let's see if we can tackle this uh, graphing problem. So in this situation, we have a researcher who wants to grow fish as fast as she can, and she noticed that when athletes take hormones, they bulk up and uh, get bigger, so maybe the same thing can happen to fish. In addition to that, she also wanted to see what effect adding more protein in the diet would have on the fish growth. And I will then switch here to the data, which I gave you a link to, as you may recall, assuming you were in school today. And here it is, all the data. Now, keep in mind that there were 20 different tanks that were set up, and the, apparently that there was two types of food, one, at least two types of food with protein, one with 5% protein, and one with 10% protein. And then the other thing that got changed was the amount of hormones. This column here, um, we have the number of fish in the tank. And in this case, if you look down there at the number of the fish in the tank, you'll notice that there's 23, 23, 46, 24, 26, 25, 24, 23, all around 23 to 41, and on the, down the line. And of course, there's an issue here. And the issue is that we have too many variables going on here. We got protein, we have hormones, and we have number of fish in the tank. So let's start with the fish in the tank. Um, that we want to make sure that it, things are as best we can do. And so when you have almost double the number of fish, that's some type of overcrowding. So we really can't deal with that data. It's just not can't be used. You can notice that um, compare these other things. And the third column, of course, is how much what the, the average mass was after three months. It looks like that. Whenever there's a lot of fish, as in 46, it was much lower, and again, it was much lower. And that might make sense because it's overcrowded, more competition for food, they don't grow as well altogether. But so what we'll do, and you can do this with data, as you know, we'll just get rid of it. We can't use that, at least for this, this thing. You can notice how it dropped, but it's just a different deal there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to delete row 15. I'm going to go up and look at tank 3. Tank 3 was way overcrowded for what we can do, so I'm going to delete that one. And if you want to be kind of conservative about this, I would say there was one that had the 30s in it somewhere since I did make this data right there. Uh, tank 13. I'm going to get rid of that one. So that is now deleted also. So now we only have 17 tanks to work with. So that's not too bad. So let's look at the next step we can do. So what do you say we divide the data into two different distinct groups. Um, food that had 5% protein and food that had 10% protein. You can do that quite easily by doing the, uh, this, the uh, data sort. So I'm going to highlight this area right here. And I'm not even going to worry about the tank stuff because that's just nonsense really. In fact, we can just get rid of it now if you want. Because the tank stuff, uh, tank number, is really insignificant. It's like being the color of the tank. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of that, remove that column, so there's one less distraction thing that we have to work out, work about. And now I'm going to highlight this area here, which is all the data, but not the, the description of them. And I'm going to go up to Data and Sort. I and mean, what I want to do is sort by column C, but the range. Today in class I was doing by sheet, and everything went crazy. Of course it would, but it's by range, and so. Um, this goes from A to Z or from smallest to biggest numerically. When I do that, you'll notice that, wow, that worked out really well. So now I have well, half the data is, is uh, and I'll just color that other half there so we can just make the distinction here. Let's go with my favorite color, green. Okay. Now let's just focus on the, the protein that has 5%. Well, a secondary sort might be to sort it by the amount of hormone same thing. I'm going to highlight the area I want to sort. I go to data sort and I'm going to sort range by column D, A to Z, because that's the column. And, and when I get done, it's nice to have 0, 5s, and 10s. So now what I can do, I can look at that's 5, 0, 23, 5. Zero. These are all pretty similar, these two. So well, I'll just give a little color to this one. I can make it yellow. And we'll do this one down here, maybe another different color, just so they look a little different from each other. We can do bright green. Um, these three that I have, actually the fourth one too, just to make all the colors nice. Okay, these three that I just colored in 
are all 5% protein, that's good. But what's different about each of them is the fact that they have um, different amounts of hormone. So what I could probably do to make my life pretty easy is just make sure that I um, take averages, something like that. And so um, what I'm going to do, just so we keep the colors kind of straight, I'll just paste that in. I'll just paste the colors in. That's all I'm doing right now. It's got the same colors, just better for me to deal with this. Is I'm going to take the average of 3.2 and 2.9. Now this is one you might be able to do in your head, and I'll embarrass myself, but um, that's what, uh, 6.1, so it'd probably be 3.05, or well, we just rounded off to about 3.1, so 3.1. Um, the next one, 4.1, 4.2, it's going to be 4 point something, obviously. And you might recall that one way you can do this also is by using formulas. If I put in the equal sign, and I type in average, in the left parentheses, and highlight the area I want, and hit return. Um, I have 4.23333, but I think I'll just kind of round it off to 4.2. Thank you very much. In this one, I can do in my head 3.2, 3.4, 3.3. I'm pretty sure it's 3.3 because it's, there's one below and one above, and so it's 3.3. So now what I've done is I've narrowed down this whole top part here to just three sets of data. This is kind of the average mass. In fact, I can actually, if I wanted to, I could just you know put that right in there, average mass. Um, don't worry about the number of fish. And the other part of this is going to be uh, the amount of hormone. And so this would be, of course, just to keep the colors the same, this would be zero. This would be five. And this would be 10. You would think that the only thing left to do is to graph it, which is true. And probably a bar graph would make the most sense for something along this line. And on the x-axis, the independent variable, what the researcher is manipulating is the amount of hormones. So I could have on the bottom 0, 5, 10. And on the y-axis, the dependent variable would be the actual mass after three months. Now here's a little interesting thing that happens, however. If I was just to graph this and do the 0, 3.15, and I go up here, here's my little charts, make a graph. What I want to do is a bar graph kind of thing. It, oh my gosh, we got one, two, three, four, five, and actually this is the zero down here that didn't really show up. And that's not quite what we want. We just want three columns. So how do we get around that? Well, when you try to graph things with a bar graph, it's usually going to be um, alphanumeric data versus numeric data. But in English, what that means is that you're, you're going to have some real numbers, like 3.1 or pi or whatever your numbers, and these have to be more alphabetical kind of stuff. And so one way around this is you could go 1, you could go 2, actually not 2, we want to go 5, but 2 would be fine too, 5 and 10. And now when I graph this, you'll see that we actually will get the graph we want. Three, only three lines. You could do horizontal, I'm going to do the vertical. And now we have 1, 5, and 10. Now, of course, the next thing to do here would be to label these things. I hope you remember how to do that. You put in a chart title, which would be, wow, what a great graph, blah, blah, blah. But we're not going to do that. You'd put in something along the lines of uh, the effect of hormones on salmon growth with 5% protein. That might be an appropriate name for that. And of course, here we need to have um, on the x-axis, excuse me, the y-axis, the dependent variables you need to put in here, the average mass after three months, and down here would be 1, 5, 10, would actually be referring to microliters of hormone. So I'm just going to close that, and that's essentially what you do. You can do the same thing for this one, too. You'd have to kind of sort that a little bit and see what's going on there. Now just one other last thing to show you, is if I was to copy and paste this here, that if I really wanted, you know, if I was really wanted to do this one, five, ten thing, another little trick you can do is that um, that is one certainly. But if I put in equal signs, put in a quotation, and put in one, and a quotation, hit return, it looks the same. But now it's actually representing this as this kind of alphanumeric. It's not the computer won't recognize this as actually the the number one, but just as like almost written out. And the same thing here, if I was to put in an equal sign, quotation, five, quotation, same thing. By the way, this also works for anything. I could put in whatever I want, stuff like that, and sure enough, there it is. Now, if I was to graph this, 
without changing that, I'd have that down on the, but that's not what I want. For, so I'm going to go back to this one and just say equals quotation uh, 10 quotation. And now, of course, when I make my graph here, I highlight this 3 by 2 bit of data here. You'll see it's just like what we got before. Um, and there's the 1, 5, 10. Keep in mind that, that 1, 5, and 10 is now alphanumeric. So I did the first, showed you how to do the first one for you, and you can do the second one. And I mean, the data would suggest that as you increase the amount of hormone, you increase the amount of pound or amount of mass on the fish and increases in kilograms. Um, but then 10, it drops back down again to 3.1. So maybe more work needs to be done. Maybe six or seven might go a little higher and then it drops again. Who knows? But this is the kind of way that you'd approach this. So I hope this will be helpful and, and maybe you can try to do the other graphs.